So Fong, he graduated from the National University of, of the Singapore with the first degree in the citizens engineer and a master degree in the business analytics. As part of his the, the Curbstone's project of his the master degree, he worked with the SAP on developing the solution on the automation yard processing using the tiny ML. So let's watch the post. Um, hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Um, yes. So, yeah, so in the video right now, you see uh, there is a life cycle status which shows the project that is running. So essentially what it does is it detects the license plate and it sends it into SAP's yard management software. So in between, the driver interfaces this with an app that he is able to scan and get a list of all the tasks, which you will see in this video now. So the driver will scan it. So once the license plate is detected, he gets this QR code to scan and presents him the list of all the tasks to do. So upon doing this, this confirms the yard task in SAP Yard Logistics. And as you see, once it's refreshed, the life cycle changes from active to confirm. Similarly, it's updated live in SAP software and the driver would arrive at the destination to do the task. Once the task is completed, the driver would similarly scan another QR code. And this will similarly check in and confirm the task over in SAP site. So all this is done without a manual intervention needed by either the driver or the yard manager managing this entire process. Similarly, in SAP software, it confirms the task and the process repeats. So what this allows the driver to do is the driver is able to scan the QR code and all this is made possible because the license plate was detected using a microcontroller in the very beginning. which retrieves these details and then sends it to the driver when he scans it with his app. So this frees up the yard manager and the yard manager is able to track the vehicle, but at the same time, does not need to manually communicate with the driver for each and every step. Yeah, that's essentially the video. Uh, if there's something I can do a short um, my PowerPoint to just to give you a better primer on the background of all this. It's a brief background um, for the video you saw is that basically managing yard processes is complicated because you have multiple trucks carrying different goods bound for different locations. So what the current situation is, is that the SAP yard logistics software that you just saw helps manage this process. But the current situation is that when a truck driver arrives at the yard, the driver will check in. And then this sends the information over to the yard manager who will get the list of tasks, you know, go location one, go to location two, and the yard manager has to liaise with the driver. So over the course of a day, you have multiple trucks. This can get very laborious for the yard manager. So what this project did was actually to automate this gate-in process through a microcontroller, in this case, the Arduino Potenta H7. So it has a machine learning model run on it. So upon detection of the truck, the machine learning model runs and detects the license plate, which is shown as the QR code. As we saw in the video earlier, the driver then scans this QR code with an app. And this app helps interface between the SAP Yard Logistics as well as the driver. So the driver gets an overview of all the tasks without having to navigate through the system and the Yard Manager does not need to manually intervene also. So upon arrival at the destination, the driver does the task. And once it's completed, he scans another QR code that is placed there. So this performs an execution over in the software SAP Yard Logistics site, which confirms the task. And the driver continues until all is done. So of course, microcontrollers are used because they're very small, they're lightweight, they're scalable. And the nature of it means there is no requirement for additional infrastructure. They can run with very low power and there's no cabling needed. So all this means that they're very scalable. You can just relocate the location without needing to worry about any other um, auxiliary equipment. 
And also importantly, the machine learning is done live on the device. So we need not send it to a cloud for processing. So it reduces the latency. And this is the brief solution architecture of it. So on the microcontroller, we have MicroPython and OpenMV, which has a license plate recognition run and trained on H impulse. We also have a dangerous good classification, but in this demo, we mainly focus on the license plate. So it sends it to the server, which you saw was the QR code that the driver scanned. And SAP AppGyver then does all the backend work, retrieves the information from Yard Logistics and presents it to the driver. Uh, yeah, so essentially what it helps to do is it streamlines this process. And because it's all automated, the Yard Manager is free to do other tasks, but at the same time able to track live by just checking the screen when the task is confirmed. And that's mainly it for the video. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, the phone. So, uh, yeah, uh, very impressive. So let me see what question I got. So the, the question from Mark. So so how many times to save the supply chain use the SAP yeah, to complete uh, the shippings or receive the task for vehicle and the driver drivers that entry the yard versus the previously the, the previous the manual the, the manually and the hand write the method i would say uh, we, we don't have like a strict measurement but the potential time saving is about five times faster okay because if you imagine a, a driver if it comes on from his vehicle scans enters let's say it takes a minute but with this software it may take maybe 15 20 seconds so you have okay. four to five times saver and that's one truck over the course of a day, you have multiple trucks and this will add up. So you have a lot of man hours saved, more importantly for the yard manager, so they can focus on other tasks. Okay, got it. So yeah, so for my view, so I also think that will be the, the technology may make the, the, the process more scal scalable. So you, you don't need to count on the person, so they can have some of the machine, some of the floor can handle that. Yes. Yeah. So another question I got from the ND. So he asking the how many connect the cameras on the H7. So how to connect the, the cameras? So is use the USB or is it just open uh, over there, MB? There is an um camera module already by Arduino Potentas Vision Shield. So it has yes. a H7 plus the vision shield combined. Okay. Okay. So it's not a USB, so it's the, the it? it's a direct the direct pin to the, the yes. camera. Okay. So consider consider the, the open MV. I know they, they build out a lot of the micro Python. So how you the how how's your experience on that? It was um interesting because for us uh we we are used to Python. So micro Python it's essentially a lighter version of it. Yes. So we don't have a lot of not all the libraries are in, but we could say we went back to first principles to really um, license, get the license plate in. So you can say more straightforward stuff, like just I mean, something as simple as finding a rectangle can help you to narrow down the search space for the uh, license okay. plate. So from your view, so that, that is not so so difficult. If you use the original Python, then you move to the open MB to use the micro Python. This is a, this is a transparent, so you don't have the much of issue on that, right? Yeah, it's not a huge issue. You just have to, I guess, find a, a less library intensive methods of doing it. Okay. Okay, got it. So uh, another question is that I, I want to ask you is because uh, the, from the different camera, they have different resolutions. So once you, you have the high resolution cameras, so they will, they will spend more time to do the, to, to the, 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 some of the calculation, the, Processing. So, how's your view? So, what's the, your spec on the, your, in your project? The our camera, I would not say it's very high resolution. Okay. Uh, because also, I guess if it's high resolution and if it takes more time, it also gets more intensive. So, for our case, it was um, relatively okay. It was in black and white, so it's not RGB, which mm -hmm. essentially also it helped in a way because um, when we uh, apply filters to really pre-process the image, you have fewer channels to process. So for us, it was acceptable resolution and it worked nice because then the truck would come in closer and it's an optimal and locate distance from the 
like potenta for it to detect. Okay, got it, got it. So the it's not necessary for the high resolution image quality. So the best thing is that they, they just need to calculate. They generally uh, can do this on the collection. That's enough. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks again, Song, your speech and your demo. That's uh, impressive. So yeah, appreciate. A final thank you to our sp sponsors. So once again, thank you, um, Edge Impulse as a premier sponsor, Qualcomm, Cintiat, Deep Light, Clickatech, Renaissance. Um, actually, what I'll do is I will go through because we, we, it will cover all the, the sponsors in detail. So the premier sponsor, Edge Impulse, um, for those who have uh, like to try a simple approach to, um, I guess, development on tiny mail devices, Edge Impulse is a great solution for you. Um, executive sponsors, Qualcomm AI Research, again, uh, a great organization that has most of the chips in most of the um, platforms around the world, um, and as well as some of their new software applications. Sintiat making edge AI a reality. Platinum sponsors, DeepLight, uh, fastest video analytics solutions on ARM CPUs. Clickatech, global IIT solutions. Renesas, uh, I guess, enabling a next generation of AI powered solutions that will revolutionize every industry sector. Sony Semiconductors Corporation. Gold sponsors, analog devices, where what if becomes what is. ARM, um, again, ARM, um, um, a large chipset provider as well, and they also have their own social um, nights, which you can join if you want to be more involved in the ARM community. Photohub, uh, making over-the-air firmware models uh, updates simple and accessible, uh, especially important with all the uh, sensors that require updates. Microsoft, uh, providing, I guess, edge computing and the, the, the capabilities to integrate into um, edge or IoT or tiny ML solutions into uh, the Azure platform. NXP, uh, again, a great hardware provider which integrates with uh, the TinyML solutions. SenseML, an analytics toolkit suite for, um, for I guess, TinyML. STM Microelectronics, which provides extensive solutions to make machine learning easy. Engineering Exceptional Synaptics, uh, Engineering Exceptional Experiences. And Silver Sponsors, AIZIP, Aon Devices, EMSA, Greenwaves, Gravity, IBM, ImagiMob, Atomus, Nota AI, OctoML, Prophecy, Quixo, Rixon, SAP, Silicon Labs, Stream Analyzer, TDK. Um, I guess before I finish off, though, if, if people are interested in sponsoring, please reach out to the team. Um, we're always happy to have uh, more sponsors because it's with this sponsorship we can run such, such events. Um, I just want to say a big thank you once again to the whole team. Um, and thank you once again to the people who presented. Um, your content is key to making these communities grow. We're hoping uh, next year we can have this in person. Uh, don't forget, as we mentioned earlier, uh, next, next year we'll be having the summit um, in San Fran. Um, but thank you. Thank you for all your help and uh, hopefully see you at the next tiny mail session. Thank you, everyone.